Hello guys. Qualitative influence lines. Drawing influence lines sometimes can be a hassle. It takes a lot of time and a bunch of calculations, especially if you are not, uh, you don't have sufficient practice what we are doing. And we are even talking only about uh, statically determinate structures. Just imagine for statically indeterminate structures. But the uh, Heinrich Müller Breslau came in, in 1886 with an approach that allows you to actually draw these influence lines without even throwing any calculation into them. And the principle of this is based on the principle of virtual work and the demonstration can be done really easy. I don't want to do it now for several reasons. First, because you're going to get bored and second, because we haven't covered that in my class yet. But anyway, what Müller Breslau proved and showed is that the influence line for any function, meaning reaction, shear, moment, whatever function that you are studying there, is to the same scale as the deflected shape of the beam when the beam is, beam is acted upon by the function. And you listen to that and probably you are listening like, uh, you know, those old cartoons when Charlie Brown is listening to the, to the parents and you, you hear and it's okay. It doesn't matter. That's why I'm here to explain it to you. Let's let's dissect this again. Deflected shape, okay? The deflected shape of the the beam is going to be in the same scale as the influence line. But now, if the beam is going to be acted upon at that point, that means that somehow we have to release that action and apply it because otherwise it's not going to be possible to do. So let me explain you what that means. The deflected shape. First, we have to remove whatever function it is. If you are looking for a reaction, then you have to remove the reaction over there. If you are looking for a moment at a particular point, then you release a moment at that point. Now, how do you release a moment in a member? You release a moment in a member in a very easy or simple way. If you have something that is like this, and this is a member, or like this, no, like this, is a member and you want to release the moment here well then I just put a hinge in that point exactly at that point I put a hinge over there take my gear there out and now the moment is released at that point and then I apply a moment that's basically what it is if you want to release a reaction then you just put a roller in the direction of the reaction that you are eliminating and same thing with the shear if you are eliminating shear then you apply a shear, you make a release of the shear, meaning I'm gonna cut the beam in two parts and I'm gonna apply those shear like you used to do for calculating shear and moment diagram. For example, let's say that you want to calculate or you want to, to draw the qualitative influence line for the reaction and don't get misguided by the qualitative word because it can be also quantitative we can calculate the values for the unit influence lines as I'm going to show you. Now determine the shape of the influence line for the beam for the vertical reaction at A. Okay, if I want to eliminate the reaction at A and keeping everything else the same, what I have to do basically is keeping the axial but eliminating the vertical. And the way that I can eliminate that is basically putting a roller acting in this direction. Yes, I know the beam is going to be unstable and that's the whole purpose of that. Once the beam is released from that axial, I'm going to apply a force. You see the roller here? I'm going to apply a unit force in this case if we're working for unit influence lines in this direction going up and this is going to be the shape. Couldn't be easier than that. I think. I don't know about you. So uh, steps. First, release that. If I'm releasing a reaction, I'm going to put a roller, guide the roller in this case. And then you act upon the direction of the reaction that you want to calculate. Once you are up acting this direction, this is going to pivot on that point and it's going to go up. And this is going to be the, the influence line. One of the things that I didn't say is that this height here is 1. That's the value of the reaction when the unit load is acting just on top of the support. And we did this example before, so you can go back and you can recheck. Let me switch to the camera document. I wasn't planning on doing it in this way, 
but let me switch to this part now. Okay, now you have these. Let's do that example that I did before. What is the example that I did before? You have a beam. This is your beam. There you go. You have a pin and you have a roller in that beam. And this is the baseline for that beam. Got it? Now, this is the reaction, AY and AX. And this is the reaction BY. If I want to find the influence lines just for the reaction AY, what I do, I eliminate that reaction. And then I put what is called a guided roller here in this part. And this is a roller. Remember, the type of rollers that we are discussing is the type of roller that hold it in position, up or down. So I'm going to hold it there, and I'm going to act in that direction. And then this is going to be the influence line. And this height is going to be 1. Once you know that height, because this is a elastic and it's a statically determinate, this is going to be proportional from 0 to 1. And you can calculate any intermediate value here. Easy. Really easy. Now let's go to another one. Let's de let's check now the for the shear. Okay, what you do for the shear it has to do a little bit, a little bit, no, a lot with the convention. Let me switch back. I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth, back and forth, but I have to. So I'm going to go here. And you have a beam now that is like that. And you have a pin you have a roller and now we have to calculate the shear at the point C if I want to calculate the shear at point C what I have to do is cut it at that point and depending on the convention that we use but remember if we use the convention here that the uh, United States uses if this is the point C then you are having a shear in this part in this section of the beam is going to go in this way the moment is going to go in that way and in the other section the shear is going to be and the moment is going to be that this is the positive direction for shear and moment when you make a cut in any mean so this is exactly what we're going to do there we're going to release that shear keeping everything but we're going to release the shear and if I release the shear I'm going to get this part and I'm going to push it down I'm going to put some guided rollers here I'm going to push this part down and I'm going to push that part up when you do that, I'm going to show it uh, with the PowerPoint and then I'm going to come back here. When you do that, then you put the axial, uh, the, the, the guided rollers here, and when you apply this part, this is going to pivot on this point, this part is going to come down, and this part is going to go up. Of course, you see the line here is kind of inclined, it's not the same that like we show when we did it because we did it vertical, perpendicular, and it's still perpendicular, but we did it vertical here. But uh, it has to be like that because this member is not shrinking as it's moving. So this part is like that. Important thing, this line and that line are parallel to each other, always have to be parallel to each other. And if that happens, you know, this is the influence line. One of the things that it doesn't mention, it's not mentioned here is now, because I'm applying the shear, the distance from here to here is that value, is 1, from here to here. Let me go back. Let me explain it to you in the dog cam. Now we have this, basically. We have this beam. And we have to convert that somehow and make it a, make a shear at that point. So I'm going to do that. So this is going to be smaller than this, so let me get this one. So I'm going to make a cut over there, and I'm going to put this here, like that. Take this out, and I have this, and I have that. Now, remember this is a pin, remember this is a roller. Now, I have to come here and apply this, and I have to come here and apply that. When I do that, if I keep my support, the points for my support in that position, this is what's going to happen. That's exactly what's going to happen. And the influence line, it's going to be this, that, and that. Or the influence line is going to be this, that, and that. Now, for our purposes, 
we are going to draw it like this. Like that. This line and this line, this is super important, and you will see it later on. This line and this line must be parallel. And if they are parallel, and I don't like giving my students these type of things because then a lot of them start stop thinking. But if this is like that and you can move this line up and you can continue this line here down, you're going to come to rea the realization that if this part here is called the distance is A, for example, and this distance here is B, then the height on the total height, let me let me draw it again here just with lines because it's gonna be easier here. And then you have this uh, the inference line is gonna be like this, like that, and like that. Good. Now if this is A and this is B, by similar triangles, this part here is B over L, where L is this, and this part here is negative A over L. So basically, you already have these two values here. And the total distance, of course, is going to be 1, the total height over there. That is not complicated. Now, how do we calculate the rest? Similar triangles. You know this distance. You know this distance. Then uh, if you know this triangle, you can cal this height, you can calculate this height also here on the other side. Just purely, pure, pure, pure geometry in that part. OK, now the last one is for moment. Moment, 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 moment. Give me a moment. OK, there you go. Now, for moment, how do you release a moment? We already say that. If you want to release a moment, what you have to do is that you have to apply, a, you have to put at that point, at that point C, a hinge. When you have a hinge, the moment is released. If that is the case, when you put the hinge and then you apply the moment in the direction of our convention, and of course if you do that, this is going to go up, this is going to go down, and you're going to have these influence lines for the moment. Now if I explain it to you in the doc cam here, the situation that we have now is something like this. You have this beam supports whatever you want to, but in this case the supports are here and here and here and this is the beam. And then you want to calculate at the point C the draw the influence line for the moment at C. Well at that point at C then I have to convert my original girder into a girder with a hinge at that point right there. That's it. And once I have that, I apply my convention. Once again, remember the convention. The convention is this for shear and moment in this side and this for shear and moment in the other side. This is a pin, this is a roller. I'm going to apply these two moments simultaneously while I keep in these two together. And this is what you get. And what you get is this. Now because because right now what I am applying is a rotation, that rotation that I'm doing, that that movement it was a rotation, then what I'm doing here is I'm applying a unit rotation and that angle over there is one. This doesn't help us like that directly to determine the influence line value, which is the one that we need, this one or this one or that one. But if it, these are rotations are small, which they always are small, and I can say this is theta 1, this is theta 2, and then, I don't know, this distance is A, once again, this distance is B, and this is H. I, al I al always have to derive this. I don't know why I resist to learn it. Uh, even though I memorize it, but I don't, I don't want to. Uh, so if you know a little bit about that, and if you don't re review, please, theta is going to be equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 for small angles and, and for not the small angles too. And this is h, but for small angles, the tangent of the angle, you know, is similar to the angle. And this, we say that is 1, is one radian, so that is a small. 
So if I get this one here, I can say the tangent of this angle is h over a. So the angle is also h over a. And this other one, then it will be h over b. And I can add these two and put it there. Say h over a plus h over b equals 1. And now we can solve for h if we know the distances. If we know the distances, then h is going to be equal a times b, a times b, a, a plus b, like that. And uh, some of the books that are in common use now, this, they don't present this formula, which I think is really easy, but they present one. Uh, they said that uh, A, for example, is L, this is L, L minus uh, B, or vice versa, or B equals uh, L minus A. And then if I put that into here, not into here, or into here, or into anyone, but let's say that I put that uh, into here. So H is going to be equal to A, but A is D, so L minus B times B divided by A, which is L minus B plus B. And this and this cancel out. And then you have here, a, you have here, let's take B, L minus B square, and then you have this L here. And then I'm gonna just take common factor L and the top, and then you're gonna have L that multiplies, or B, let's, let, I don't know why I solve it. And I'm gonna take just common factor B again. L divided by L is one, and this is gonna be then B divided by L. This is, I think this is the way that the equation is presented most uh, commonly. Or, or you can say also that H is A that multiplies one minus A over L. Either of them they work. Any of the three of them. I, I, this is easier to memorize than any of the other two if you want to do it. And once you know this H by geometry you can calculate these other two. And that's it. Influence lines. Qualitative method. Mutual breast law. Hope you like it. Keep watching. Next video I'm going to solve a bunch of problems. One after the other after the other after the other. Just qualitative. I'm not going to calculate any value. And in other videos, then we're going to use Mueller-Breslow approach, and we're going to solve the problems using that approach. See you later. Keep watching. Keep learning. Keep learning. Keep learning. No. Keep learning. Bye.